Now we're going to talk about different types of neuromuscular blocking agents, specifically the ones broken down by plasma cholinesterase and how they pertain to clinical situations. The first drug we're going to talk about is succinylcholine and also mivacurium. Those two are the only muscular blocking agents that are metabolized by pseudocholinesterase, also called butylcholinesterase, and also called plasma cholinesterase. Um, if you're going to give these drugs, which we do give a lot of succinylcholine, so it probably pertains more to this drug as opposed to mivacurium, you have to be careful with patients who might have an atypical pseudocholinesterase deficiency or just atypical pseudocholinesterase. And the reason why is because if they do have this, their succinylcholine block that normally lasts only about four to six minutes could last maybe half an hour to an hour if they are heterozygous for the plasma cholinesterase, or it could last up to three to six hours, in some cases 12 hours, if they are homozygous for the atypical pseudocholinesterase. In that case, they would probably end up in the ICU overnight. Um, so a way we can determine if someone has the deficiency and what type of deficiency they have, specifically what genotype, is that we can look at their, their Dibuquet number. These numbers represent their Dibuquet number. What Dibuquet is, it is a local anesthetic that we can draw blood from somebody and we can put a little bit of Dibuquet in the blood and if 75% or greater of plasma cholinesterase is bound to the local anesthetic, then we know that person most likely will have a normal response to our succinylcholine. It's about 96% 90 of the population is normal for their plasma cholinesterase. If they're heterozygous, their DBK number will be between 35 and 65. And they might have a slightly pro prolonged block, probably maybe up to 30 minutes, uh, which we could handle. Uh, the frequency would be about 1 in 480 people. And the last one, and the most concerning, would be that person that is homozygous for atypical pseudocholinesterase, um, and their DBK number would be less than 30. And so the block would be greatly pro prolonged in this case, um, from 3 to 6 hours up to 12. And your odds of having that are, are pretty low, 1 in 3,200. Um, so it is up to the anesthesia provider to be very vigilant about getting a history from somebody. So if you're doing your workup for somebody in the pre-op, or hopefully you'll do it the night before, in your care plan, is that you will find out if they've had anybody in their family or they themselves have ever, ever gotten a neuromuscular blocker that caused them to go to the ICU and be paralyzed for many hours. We want to avoid this. And that concludes my talk on Dibuquet numbers and atypical cholinesterase.